Son of a go are you kidding me? What is wrong with this? Why is this happening? Maybe it's Unreal Engine? Like, why would that be causing it though? Wait, hold on. I clicked off. Oh, it's flickering, but it's not like scaling now. Hold on, cancel. Oh, uh oh. It's Unreal Engine. Hold on, hold on. I think I know how to fix it. I think it's because our scalability settings are like cranked all the way up. Yep. That's dumb. That is really dumb. Like why though? I'm turning them on one at a time to see which one triggers it. Oh, wait, hold on. Maybe you're wrong. Maybe not. Stop. I don't know. I guess we'll leave them on low. That is the dumbest thing. Well, here we are like 10 minutes into the stream. Oh yeah, chat's not even open now. I don't know why chat got closed on me. Okay, I think it's fixed. I still have like a two minute delay as well. Uh, wait. Well, folks, great stream. See you next, see you next week. Yeah, I was just restarting. I'm sorry, you guys. How how bad is the delay now? Because there, there shouldn't be a delay. I didn't. There shouldn't be an issue with that. Test. Just saw test prestige. How 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 is that delay? The camera is still flickering. I don't know what the hell's wrong with this. I, maybe it's my computer. I don't know. About thirty seconds. Jeez. I have like zero delay turned on. Like I have low latency turned on on purpose. Let me double check on here. I don't remember where the option is. Pretty sure. Yeah, there's a stream delay option on Streamlabs, but it's I have it turned off. When you stream on when you stream on um Steam, like on your store page on Steam, you have to have a 20 second delay. I don't know why, but they force you to have a 20 second delay or it doesn't work. But yeah, I don't know. You need to change your hard drive. I don't think it's the hard drive. I'm afraid it's the graphics card, but I don't I don't know. Way better. Yeah, I mean, it's better. 30 seconds is still insane, though. 30 seconds could be on my end. Hopefully it is. All right. If it if the, the camera breaks again, like like I see, I keep seeing it flickering whenever I'm in an engine, which is stupid. Um, but if uh, if you see it break again, yeah, we lot we went from 23 viewers down to 10 because I ended the stream for literally 10 seconds like i was like counting it was like 10 seconds i ended the stream i shut down streamlabs open streamlabs back up hit go live and it was we already lost more than half of our viewers Ah, <laughs> uh, that's okay i honestly think it could be some weird interaction between streamlabs and unreal it could be um but i'm i'm pretty confident that here soon i'm gonna just take a day or two maybe a couple maybe three or four days it depends on how long it takes and I might just go and switch everything over to OBS and just redo my whole thing. I want to redo like my layout and everything too. I want to redo the whole thing. I want to just kind of refresh everything. It's been like this for years. It's time to time to switch it up. Anyway, <coughs> now that we're back and like actually see what the, what's going on in the stream. Um, this is a side project that I started. I don't know, I think like three months ago, four months ago now, maybe. Um, I think it was like December, maybe before, maybe it was November. Um, it's currently nicknamed Stacksmith. It is a blatant ripoff of um, 
stack lands, basically. <laughs> but you play a blacksmith. Um, oh, I have a bunch of errors. That's fun. None of this is even doing anything, so I don't know what the problem is. What? Seems like it compiled just fine to me. Uh, so yeah, this is the game right now. You can pan around, yay. And then you can hover over these cards. They don't have a shadow right now, and I don't remember why. I turned off the shadow and didn't mean to. I broke something. Anyway, you can drag them around. Um, and I did hand paint these cards. This is not generated art. Look at me go. Uh, and you can, whoops, you can snap them together like so. This part is super buggy, though, because it doesn't always snap. And then you get this issue, too, which is very buggy. Um, but you should be able to do this and snap them together. Cool. So, of course, like when I go to show you guys, it's all working pretty much. Oh. That one broke. So it's broken. No, maybe not. Of course, when I go to show you guys, it's all working perfectly. And I'm like, I'm over here, like, banging my head against the wall trying to fix this. So, um, basically. Anything happened with that guy you reached out to, the one you wanted to work with? Literally nothing. Um, but he hasn't posted a single post. He hasn't posted a single video since then. And it's been almost three weeks. So I'm like. I don't know. I think I, I might reach out again. I might do a follow up email and just be like, hey, I'd love to make a game with you or something, you know, a little game jam, something. I don't know. Um, I'm going to look up his YouTube real quick. Uh, as far as I can tell. Nope. Oh, wait, no, 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 just kidding. He hasn't posted anything. I hate that like for you thing on when you go to someone's channel. I just want to see the, the, the latest video. Uh, but yeah, he hasn't posted anything. So I don't know. Anyway, um, things get lost. Follow up is not a bad idea. Yeah, he, he posted and said he got he had like like hundreds of emails. It was like 400 emails or something to get through. So, I mean, even if it didn't get lost, there's a good chance he did redeem my key. Uh, I sent him a, I sent him a, a key to Swords of Magic and it was redeemed. I sent him two keys, actually. Only one was redeemed when I checked last. I should check again. Um, so I know that he did get my email and did redeem the key. Uh, what's up, Matt? It's no, it's not a trading card game, but it's sort of like that. Look, I even have and maybe Photoshop will also crash on us. Nope. Um, I've had more art. I hand painted art for this game prototype. Are you impressed? Be impressed. I hand painted this. And that is saying something for me because I am not good at that stuff. So that's that's cool, I guess. <laughs> um, let me explain what it is. Got a game to burnout and started a side project as well. Yeah, it happens, right, Sky? Um, I just I think I just crunched too hard for the last update and I didn't realize it. It was weird because it like I didn't realize I was burnt out until I took like a day off from Swords of Magic and I was like, I don't want to work on this. <laughs> um, Kendra's a real artist. I guess so. <clears throat> it's just don't ask me to make characters. I don't like I'm going to have to do characters for this, too. And I don't think I I don't I don't know. I'm pretty nervous about that, but I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> um. It, what helped is when I drew, when I like modified the AI art for like the, um, the new Swords of Magic art. When I was like over, like painting over that and like cleaning it up and everything and adding stuff to it, that helped a lot. Cause I was like, I can match the style. I could definitely do my own thing. And so I tried that and it worked. <coughs> a chess mini game for the main game. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So I definitely don't, I don't want to. I used to do that where I'd get like burnt out on one thing. So I just start making new cool stuff for Swords of Magic. But I don't want to touch Swords of Magic right now because every time I do that, it turns into like more and more work, just way too much work. So I don't want to do that. Um, I have a lot of side projects. Uh, in fact, I wasn't going to talk about this, but uh, this this 
marketing push we did did okay and it made the money we needed to keep working on the game temporarily but it didn't it, we were really hoping it was just gonna kind of like take off a little more and like make enough money that we wouldn't have to like stress for a few months and it didn't it made enough money that we don't have to stress for a month and a half but just you know that's that's what it is it's whatever it is what it is i just have a lot of people telling me that like the game's kind of it's over like i'm probably not gonna bring it back you know at this point and it, uh, maybe maybe not i'm but my my goal is i want to get to 1.0 no matter what and so i'm gonna keep chipping away at it over time period like i'm gonna keep working on it. burnout is my favorite season of the year <laughs> um we don't need that kind of negativity in our lives i know i know and i agree um so i'm not quitting don't, don't worry about that but there does come a point where a time where like i have to face facts and decide like is it worth putting like 120% into Swords and Magic to make enough money to pay bills every month? Or should I try putting the 100, like, you know, 100% and an extra 20 into Swords and Magic and then put the 100% into a different project and try to actually make some money? And I know I've talked about this a million times and we've done this a million times. Um, and I'm just like, it's hard for me to stick to a project because I start on it and I like prototype it and then we like, I start looking for the pinch potential in it and I don't, I don't see it anymore after we prototyped it um and I think that's okay like I think that's a good thing if a developer can like prototype it out and then look at it and go yeah this isn't gonna work I think that's a good thing um what I'm worried about is I'm I'm not it's not like me being realistic about like whether it's gonna work it's more about me like what if this fails you know and then going back into my old ways of like making 55,000 small game projects and then deciding never to stick to any of them so it worries me a little bit that like Swords Magic was like a one hit wonder for me and I'm never going to be able to like, it, like actually finish a game again. Um, Swords and Magic gotcha mobile. Ugh. No, thank you. Um, but I don't think so. I don't think I'm not I'm not too worried about that. Like, I do think I can still bring another game to market. I just need to like find one that I think is going to work. That's small enough in scope that not going to be daunting and overwhelming right now after such a huge project with Swords and Magic. And then like making sure I can actually get it to 1.0 before we launch, you know, so I'm not doing early access again because I refuse to do that again. Um, so that's like I would. This is like one of those games that I was like, I think we could do that with this game, but it has a really complicated this like this stacking mechanic is way more complicated than it seems at first glance. So I've been working on it for like two days. Um, I have only put in putting in a few hours a day in, if that, because I'm recovering from the burnout. So I'm just kind of working on that. You can always do more RPGs with smaller scope. True, I, I can. But even just an RPG is like still a lot um and i would like to do that with the celestera game that we were like we were like kind of like feeling out a few months ago if you guys remember that one it's the one where like it's like an rpg it takes place in a world with no sun just moons like a bunch of moons and like celestial like gods and stuff um and i love that idea a lot because i've been world building on that for a little while and i want to like write a book in the the world or something but then like i have this idea because we're i'm trying to get back into DD and we're trying to get a little group together to play once a week and i had this like realization like why don't i just like we should like do D, &D in that world because that'd be super fun and then like i started looking into like the different like i have okay so i have this book called the ruins of simbaroon which is a like D, &D um it's based on 5e, but it's like a t different kind of like rule set. And it's like this really dark and like gritty, like almost like Dark Souls D&D. &D. And it's really cool. And there's a couple of cool mechanics in it, like this corruption thing where you become corrupted. And then like as you get more and more corrupted, like you get like these physical like ailments and stuff and like different things like show up on your body and stuff. I'm not going to get into like the grotesque details because it's pretty grotesque, but like crazy stuff happens. And you can also have like these like other things happen like you're craving like warm blood or whatever and like you can't like not focus on it right so you like have to have like warm blood every day and that's like a, a like a corruption thing and i was like i love that system that's such a cool idea because it adds so much like storytelling potential where you like now you have like this character who's like obsessed with blood suddenly and like the rest of the party's like whoa dude like we're not gonna like uh, like assist you in like finding warm fresh blood for you or whatever so like you're gonna have to do this on your own or whatever and it just becomes like this crazy conflict and then you're like i have to hide my corruption now from the rest of the party like i just love that like storytelling element of like having that kind of stuff happen 
um, like those like, like negative stuff. And like dark gritty worlds are really good for that kind of stuff because it's like you have to be really careful, right? Like you can't just like like saunter in and like you know you'll just get killed. So anyway, love that idea. Being corrupted and getting ailments. S and M did it first. <laughs> Uh, not quite to this extent, but yes, I guess so. Um, anyway, so I was like, I love that system, but I don't think I can convince enough people to play in the Simba Room universe because it's really dark. It's like, like I said, Dark Souls, lots of like grotesque monsters and like horror and like stuff like that. And it's just a little much, I think. And if I ever want like Abby or whatever to play, like it's too much. So, um, yeah. And so I was like, I wish there was like something that had that sort of system. I also don't like class based RPGs a lot, like a ton, because I'd rather I like the skill based RPGs more because you feel like you're like kind of like building the character you want rather than just like picking a character. And then like one good example is like a rogue could technically like never, ever like backstab anyone ever. And then suddenly at like level 15 or whatever, just like I'm going to backstab someone now and then they just like one it, you know, if that possible, they've never even tried that before. And now they're like really good at it. So um, anyway, so yeah, I was just like, I really like the skill, like the skill system where you like use skills and level them up, which is why they're in Swords of Magic. I've always liked that idea. So anyway, so I was just thinking like, uh, thanks for the follow. Welcome in. Um, Anyway, I was, just, I was just thinking like, it'd be fun to do this like that. And then I was like, why don't I just like use 5e like for like the base system and then just kind of replace some stuff that i want like the class system replace that with skills and like throw in this like corruption system kind of thing but do it in my own way and so i, I spent i was literally up till 5 a.m last night because i had all these ideas suddenly for like celestara becoming a, like a tabletop rpg and i was like this is awesome i i don't want to forget any of this stuff and so i played on gpt for like hours and i wrote down all the ideas and i just did this whole thing i spent way too long on it last night um, so that's, that's what I've been doing, but I love this, like the Celestera world and everything. And I would love to do like an RPG in that world, but like even just a, a even like, oh, I'm going to just scope this down to like a five or 10 hour, like, like, like story experience. Like, yeah, that sounds awesome. And it sounds way more doable than a huge open world, but I, that's still a ton of work because you got to make all the characters got to make, got to find all the animations or make all the animations, whatever you got to make all the art for the world. You've got to do like the story, the world building, you got to do the like the story driven stuff. You got to do like the quest system, if there's going to be one or how that's going to work. Like there's still tons of mechanics. Then you have to make the combat like really satisfying if you can do something like that. And I'm thinking like Dark Souls like kind of stuff. Like there's just so much work that goes into it. And I know we looked into like the blueprint systems where we could be like, oh, let's just spend like a hundred bucks and we have like all this stuff already built in and we can just build the world around it. But like those are not like super polished and like as good as I want them to be. And so I'd want to just like tweak all those anyway. And, and at that point, it's just easier to build all that stuff by myself or by hand. So I don't know. It's still a lot of work to build an RPG. So I don't know. I like the idea. I've seen a lot of people making like small games that they knock out in like a few months and they do like two or three of those a year and they just make enough money to like make a living doing that. And I just kind of love the idea of that because one, I have a ton of ideas I want to explore in games, not just RPGs, not just like open world games, not just like these massive ideas and like Another thing is like smaller games let you explore more of those ideas in a less like risky way, right? If I'm making like another huge Swords and Magic's like scope game and I want to try like Celestera or whatever, like a new world, I can't really do that in that huge scope of a game because like what if it fails? That's why Swords and Magic is so like generic fantasy because like if I started doing something that was like way too like niche and narrowed down, like people would be like, eh. This is just a little indie game and I don't really like the theme. I'm not going to play this, right? It just it just kind of like cuts people out and not that I want to make a game for everyone, but like I just feel like with this many mechanics and this like big of a world that kind of has to be pretty broad strokes to like encompass enough players to like want to play it, which I think worked. But like and also like if I risked like building this crazy like new world where it's always set in like perpetual darkness and stuff like that and like has like this crazy new magic system and everything that doesn't like work like normal spell casting and everything and then no one likes it then i wasted you know who knows like years of my life building it and it fails or and like even like a 10 hour rpg is probably going to take six months to build right depending on what it is and like how complex i want it to be but anyway so yeah i'm just looking at like smaller scoped games that maybe we can knock out um and dwarven hole was supposed to be one and i know it was kind of matt user his term was whiplash like uh, which was kind of perfect for it. I was like, cool, we're doing this game. We're making this new game. And then like we got to the point where it was like prototype ready and it was like, ah, not really feeling it anymore. 
Um, and I don't know if it was just me getting bored of it or if it was just me like like actually seeing it as like this isn't going to be fun. But either way, it kind of flopped and I kind of dropped it. That said, it doesn't mean I'm giving up on it. We might come back to it one day. Who knows? Um, but yeah. Anyway, every system you've put into SNM can always be reused for future projects. So the time invested will always hold greater value than the situational usage. If that makes sense. Well, yes and no, because a lot of the stuff in SNM is kind of intertwined, right? I can't like grab like the enhancement system I just added, right? I can't use that outside of SNM unless I rebuild it, right? Um, because I like I'd have to take all of the combat system, all of the like the the buff system, like the stat system, the attributes, all that stuff would have to be stripped out of SNM for it just to use the enhancement system with it. So if I wanted to change anything, like if I just wanted the enhancement system and not the other stuff, I can't, right? Like I just can't do that. I have to rebuild it from scratch. And like rebuilding something the second time, not a big deal. Like it's faster and easier, but I still have to rebuild it. So there are some things I could take, like the art, for example, I could take the art out and put another game if I wanted to. But that's like the one thing you wouldn't want to take out of one game. Is there plans for SNM modding? Uh, Sky, I would like there to be, but I just feel like that's probably going to be way too much of a task for me. I just I don't think I have a clue how to even like start that. Um, I do know that in Unreal, they do. It is kind of a little bit streamlined. Like, I know I can kind of just like release like a custom like version of the engine. Like when we use our own custom version of, of UE in of Unreal Engine anyway, we have a uh, we use the UE4 source, but we call it the KG. Well, now we call it the KG source or Kindred Game Source. Um, it's like there's like one line of code that's changed in it now at this point um, because I did change some stuff in like the engine. Like I don't remember what I changed. It was something. It might have been just an, an engine plugin, but whatever it was, I changed like one line of codes. But it's basically the exact same thing. But I know you can take that like source engine and strip out parts like you can hide things like I can be like, oh, I don't want players to be able to modify like the character, for example, um, but they can modify all these data assets and create new ones they want to um, like you can like limit that stuff and then you just launch that as like a new engine. So like, for example, I want to mod um, Conan Exiles, right? I literally can just download the Conan Exiles like source, like their mod kit, which is just a version of Unreal Engine. It's just a new version of Unreal Engine. And I open that up and it just like limits to me, limits me to like what I can modify and what I can't. So I can literally just go in and like make a new blueprint and make like new code and just like modify the game. Um, but like that also is really complicated because then you have to like figure out like modders then have to figure out like how the whole system works. And like Swords of Magic is not built very modularly like that. It wasn't built with modding in mind. It, so we built it, we designed it with modding in mind. It wasn't programmed with modding in mind. So a lot of it just doesn't quite work. I think I missed what this card game is. What's the basic idea? OK, let's go over that. Sorry, I don't think I ever went over it. Uh, the basic idea is you are a blacksmith. Um, you will have a blacksmith character card. that's like says blacksmith and shows like a picture of a blacksmith on it. And then you can um, like drag him around and like place him places. Right. And he just like hangs out. He's just a little blacksmith. Uh, and then there's like a mine over here, right? You can like scroll over and you're like, oh, there's a mine here. So you grab your blacksmith and you're like, cool, let's put him on the mine. Blunk. And he like starts working. There's like a progress bar and then he like spits out a card, right? He's like mine something. And then you have a resource and you do that a couple times and you're like, cool, I have, you know, two like copper ores or whatever. And then you take your blacksmith and your copper ores and you like take your two copper ores and you stack them together and you put them on the smelter. And then you set your blacksmith on like the little working station next to the smelter and then do 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 and it smelts those two copper ores into a copper ingot. So while this is going on and you can like kind of like so cold simulator. Yeah. Uh, or stack lands or there's, there's like three of them. I think uh, Witch hand is the other one. There's like three games that have like the very similar like stacking mechanic. And I love these games. And so does Jana. Jana's played like hundreds of hours of each one and like finish like everything there is to finish in them. So we were like, let's just make one like that. Like it, the, the mechanics are pretty simple and like the like there's no one's done like a blacksmithing one yet. And I think that'd be really fun. So we just decided to try that. <laughs> Maybe it sounds like collecting and spend resources, like how you use mana slash land and magic. Uh, kind of. <clears throat> Thanks, Matt, <coughs> for smoothing that. Anyway, while this is going on underneath like here, there's going to be a road like a, like some art with like a road and there's like little little people, maybe cards. I'm not sure yet. 
and they'll be like bouncing around walking down across the road right they're your customers so you can like open your shop or whatever to like take orders they'll stop here and like give you an order they'll like request something and be like oh i'm looking for two copper ingots and you can be like oh sweet and you like click it and accept it or whatever you or maybe you like drag the order out or whatever and set it here and then you take the two copper ingots and you drag them onto it and then it like completes the order and you get some gold we only got one more snooze <laughs> okay <laughs> good to know um so then you get some gold and then what you do with that gold uh i think you buy like upgrades or packs so in um stack lands there's like a a menu at the top here that has like um a bunch of like booster packs in it right and you take like gold cards and drag them onto it and it like gives you like you buy the booster packs then you can open them you like click it and it like pops up pops cards out of it and uh those booster packs just give you more cards that's the only way you get more cards really unless you like like you can get trees in stack lands and then you like put your character on the tree and he just sits there and like chops the tree and then wood comes out of it we should just play it Hold on, let's just play stack lines and you guys get an idea. Oh, look, I already have it open because I was literally playing it the other day while I was working on this. Let's close this. Oh, Sorry, it's probably really loud. I have all my audio changed for. Oh, no, I'm squished again. Hang on, I think it'll fix. The sock pop catalog is intimidating as heck. Yeah, they have tons of games. A lot there, but that's the thing. Like that, like sock pop's a big inspiration for me as far as like these games go because they're so tiny, right? They're just a bunch of tiny like experimental games, and they're great. Like a lot of them are really fun. Okay, so I'm playing already. Right, I already have a run going. I don't remember what I was doing. I run. Okay, hold on. Let me let's start. We should start a new one. Let's start a new one so it's not so complicated. I don't really care about this one. <clears throat> I don't I'm not like I love this game but like I'm not too concerned let's just do peaceful and let's do long day so you like it's not as stressful okay so here's how the game starts you click this boom 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 you get cool like shaking effects and everything here's my villager this would be like your blacksmith right so I'd like have a blacksmith here and then this would be like a, a like a mine but I these wouldn't be movable like they'd just be the mine that's like stuck here off the side or something you take your villager and you're like or your blacksmith and you're like cool my villagers or my blacksmith is over here mining at this mine oh there's a rock that would have been a better example you're like what a, what a, what what happens now and you're like boom oh cool i got some ore right um so that's basically <laughs> how it works so in this one you have to feed your villager um he has to eat two food every day so like this over here like eventually ticks down when it hits when it hits the end here it becomes a new day and you have to feed all your villagers so you can have like 15 of these villagers and each one has to eat two food you have a limit of how many cards you can have i don't know if we'll have that maybe i don't know if we'll even have days maybe we will just because then you can like shut down your shop and like reopen it again so maybe i don't know um <clears throat> but yeah that, this is this is basically like the the whole game so like i can take these berries and like sell them get three coins and then buy a new booster pack what Buy a new booster pack. There we go. And I just like pop those out. Now I'm like, okay, cool. Let's go to this thing. So I can oop. Let me do that. I meant to move the whole tree. Interesting the villager doesn't hover. Only like the base card hovers. I'm struggling a lot with this hover mechanic. <laughs> and this like follow mechanic, like where it drags behind it. I had that working and then the problem is it like also does it in like the Z. Um, and so when you like hover this one, the berry bush would like goes underneath it and then pop and bounces back up. So like it goes like this and like covers, you know what I'm trying to say? I don't know. Hard to explain. Anyway, but yeah, you can just kind of like build like it's sort of it sort of reminds me of do you guys ever play like that? Um, that old like alchemy game like on your phone where you like combine elements. I think it was called alchemy. You like combine elements and then you um like experiment to try to find what other elements there are out there and you combine those ones and then you combine those ones and etc etc it's sort of like that <laughs> what do you think matt <laughs> you're the one that wanted to know more about the game 
What's your what's your opinion on it so far? I think I can put like two wood and stone together and make something. I don't remember what it is though. And then you have all these like ideas. I I don't think we would do this. I'm thinking we'd have like an anvil. Like you'd have like your little like shop and you'd have like an anvil and like a like a processor, like a smelter, or whatever. And like you just like click on the anvil and there'd be like a drop down menu probably. And it would like drop down and show all the recipes, you know, and I don't know how you maybe you'd unlock recipes by unlocking new resources. I don't know. And then you just like pick one and it would show you like little tabs on the side to, to show you like what what items you need in that stack to like craft that thing. I made a home. Uh, if you put two villagers in a home together, you make a baby villager. I don't know. There's no stork involved. So confuse me. I don't understand that the mechanics of that. Um. All right, so now to feed my villagers, guess what? I sold all my berries because I'm not actually playing. Uh oh, I died. Game over. Corpse. <laughs> GG. Back to my menu. Anyway, the game gets pretty complex. You can like travel to different lands and stuff. There's all kinds of crazy stuff you can do. You can vibe with it. Yeah, Um. so let's look at like marketability. Let's look at this the store page for stack lands. <laughs> Keep in mind, there are approximately five games with these mechanics that are like that and people seem to genuinely like them since we have 96 positive rating of 22,000 reviews. So let's just um, let's just go see what that is like estimating. So that's I mean, it's on sale right now for six dollars. So by the way, if you want to buy it, go get it now. It's six dollars. Come on. Um, but it's eight dollars normally. So eight dollars at 22,000 reviews. Steam revenue calculator. I don't know what we were calculating last, and I don't know. I don't know why I remember that. Twenty-two thousand zero two eight at seven ninety nine. So they grossed eight million dollars. How long did it take you to make it? How long did it take me to make what? I didn't make stack lands. I wish I made stack lands. <laughs> to make what I have so far, I spent maybe a few days on it. I spent like a few hours on the art, just like. Like this art, I spent like maybe a few hours on and I was mostly just kind of like experimenting with the style and trying to figure out something that like worked for it. Um, still not 100% sold on the style, but like I think it works and it's probably good enough for now. Um, and then the actual like mechanics of it, I've spent like a few days and most of that is just like kind of building and rebuilding the stacking mechanic because I want to make sure it's done the right way. Like I only have like the bottom one that hovers and they have the top one that hovers when it's stacked. But there's like this gets janky. Like I don't know how to. Like I'll show you. It's it's gonna start getting janky and weird and like broken. Yeah, like this one won't let me stack now. So there's definitely something wrong with the logic. I need to like rebuild it and I need to build it in a, in a smarter way anyway. Like and this one's trying to stack on itself and like failing. Like I'm getting errors because it's trying to stack on its on a one of its children. It's it's the what I the system I have right now is pretty jank and I need to fix it because it's bugged. Um. So I'm kind of like redoing that right now. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Also, what have our music? There, music's back. Uh, on Steam, I bet a game like that did numbers on Switch. Oh, just got here. I assumed you were talking about a game you made. Oh God, I wish. <laughs> I wish. That's that's a that's a sock pop sock pop game. Um, but the fact that there's only four or five games out there with that same mechanic that I know of anyway, there's there might be more. I'm sure there's more people who are like frantically trying to copy that formula right now, including me. Um, the fact that there's a very very large market for it, right? Twenty two thousand reviews on the more popular one. And there's very few games right now tells me that's a huge audience like that's a there's a there's an in there so i do feel like and a, and a blacksmithing game with like cute like poppy art like this i do feel like would be pretty cool so what are you hoping sets this apart from Stacklands? the fact that you're a blacksmith and you're running a blacksmith shop Stacklands is a survival village building game um they call it what they call it um a card builder i think is what they called it so that, that the difference would be that this is a this is a blacksmith um, like almost like a tycoon like shop running game. 
So that's also a really popular mechanic right now. So if you look at like Moonlighter and stuff. Um, oh, I should have just clicked. The so Moonlighter has thir sorry, 13,000 reviews. And it's just like a game where you, I mean, this is a totally different game, but like it is a game where you run a shop. Like ultimately what it boils down to is like you run a shop, right? Um, so there's like a whole, there's a whole dungeon crawling mechanics stuff and that wouldn't be in this game. So, but like shop mechanics and shop games are a pretty big deal right now too. So I do think there's a lot of like, there's a lot of potential for it. Capture the cottage core audience. I could see running a medieval tavern could be a popular variant. Um, yeah, with like cards like that, like come in the, the okay. So here's one one issue or one thing I'm trying to avoid because of mm, apparently I don't know. I'm not <laughs> not the best programmer. <laughs> sometimes I'm just hump like sometimes I'm like like I can look at like a game like Dark Souls or something or like an RPG or like many other games and be like, yeah, I know how to, I, I could code like everything in that game. Probably, you know, it would take a while and like maybe it wouldn't be as smooth or whatever and it might take me a little while. And maybe it wouldn't be as performant, but I could definitely make that game, right? And then I come into a game like this with like these interesting, different, unique mechanics. And I'm immediately humbled. I'm immediately just like, oh my God, I am not a great programmer. So a game like a, a tavern simulator where you have like people coming in and bumbling around and running into each other and stuff. And you have to like, they're like bumping cards out of the way and like cards are getting like pushed everywhere and stuff. And like physics are kind of in the in the mix. Um, no thanks. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe we could literally just turn on like physics and like put like a capsule collision on the cards and just have physics. They just actually like physically bump into each other and maybe that'd be fine. I don't know. Um, but it sounds like a mess. So in Stacklands, you, there's like wild animals and monsters and stuff that even that'll come and attack your village because it's, it's, it's a city builder, right? Um, but like you can get like rabbits and stuff and they'll just wander around and I think they'll like munch on your carrots and stuff, but I can't remember. I think they'll eat them if you're not careful. So you can like drag the rabbit around and stuff, but it will like keep hopping around to it's like wherever it wants to go. And if you put two rabbits together, obviously, you know what you get. And so like there's a lot of stuff like that. <clears throat> Got to bust out the Excel. Tavern Simulator is practically where I started game dev six years ago. Smoothing over all that stuff was a mess. Um, having to figure out the st st statistical distributions for customers arriving. Yeah, that's a mess. Yeah, exactly, Sky. I, 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 we're on an ad, so you guys probably can't hear me. I guess I'll stop talking. Matt, if you can hear me, do you think that's enough to set it apart? Ad break over. So one thing that never mind. Never mind. Um. Yeah. So Matt, what do you think? Do you think that's enough to set it apart? So here, let me show you the other alternatives. And I, I've, I've never played um, Cultist Simulator, or even like looked at it really. But I think Cultist Simulator is similar. Hmm, kind of. It's definitely not quite the same thing. Like, it's got some similar mechanics and like, it's all card based, but it definitely has different. And there's no stacking. God, imagine if we could avoid stacking. I mean, I guess I could. I guess we could find a mechanic that doesn't involve stacking your cards and you just drag them around. Because it literally, if, if this game is all about just dragging cards into slots, like that would be so much easier. <laughs> so much easier than what I'm doing. <coughs> Deck Builders Fest. Oh no. Oh no, I might be spending a little bit of money there. Anyway, um, so that's Stacklands. Or stack Stacklands and Cult Simulator, and then the other one, and against a Cult Simulator, I would not say is the same thing. It's just, it's totally like it's similar, but it's definitely different. Holy Moses! But there's no stacking, right? There's no stacking and combining cards. It looks like, um, but it is a cool concept, and maybe, maybe we kind of look into that a little more. 
Uh, and then the other one is Witch Hand. Which is on my wish list. Jana's played the hell out of this. They have a super long demo. And this is literally just stack lands with a witch theme, right? Cute, cute art, witch theme. Like you have these kinds of things. So I was already thinking like we can do like some like this where you have like the two cards where you have like a smelter and like you have, you know, a card here, like all the ore here, and then like your um your uh 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 uh, uh fuel or even like whoever's working at the smelter on this side or whatever. Things like that. Anyway, um and you can like drag these around too. It just drags all the cards like this. You can drag this bottle around. All that stuff moves. So yeah, like this is the same this is the same game. It's a little more complex. They've added like the new mechanics. Um which our new mechanics would be like, you know, NPCs walking around on the bottom. That would be like the new mechanic we're adding. And the fact that you're like running a shop instead of you know, building a village. And this one I don't even know what you're doing in this one, I guess. I don't remember. <laughs> I played it for a little bit and then I showed it to Jana and she was obsessed with it. She played the hell out of it. Anyway, but yeah, like there's. There's a lot of potential in this. Also, if I can get a prototype up and running, I think I could easily get published too, right? Hop Frog published this game. I think I could easily get published, maybe not by Hop Frog, but like by somebody, you know, if the art's there and everything. And their art style is pretty simple. I think art style is already more complex than theirs is. And like, yeah, and I can kind of dumb down the cards and everything. Like, I don't know. There's a, there's, there's a lot of potential for games like in this, this genre. Expanding the map size is good to steal that. Um, yeah, so I thought about that too. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I don't know how or if you can like decorate your shop. I haven't decided if that's going to be a thing or if it's just going to be about like getting more resources and like I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But my point is, there's only like five games that I know of that like use these mechanics and everyone like, OK, so this one, this one only has 280 reviews. So this is kind of a little bit telling, right? Like 280 reviews. Our game has 750, but it has also been out since 2020. This game just came out in February. So it's been out for a month and a half. So 280 reviews in a month and a half is already like way better than our game our game is done um but who knows like this one could be dead in the water however Jana also said that this game seems to be lacking some stuff and a lot of people were, were saying that it doesn't it's like I don't know just a reskin but ours is gonna be a reskin too I don't know I'm not expecting like I'm not expecting to like go make get 22,000 reviews like I'm not like that's fine I'm not expecting that I am expecting to make like 10 to 15 grand and then, you know, not have to worry about losing my house next month. That's what I would like to do. Decorating shop draws in more more patrons <clears throat> or the kind of shop can uh, bias the items people are interested in. Yeah, I don't know how you would decorate the shop, though. I guess maybe you could just drag out like decorations and just put in places. Like not as cards, just as things. Another thing, um, so when I started, when I first started like playing with this idea, I was think I was talking to someone about it. Maybe I was talking to, I think I was talking to Limezy, and I don't remember how it got brought up, but he was saying that he looked at Stacklands, maybe his Witch Hand, I don't know. And he was saying he liked the idea of it and he liked the concept, but he wished that it wasn't cards. He wished that it was just like, you know, like things you actually dragged around, like you just dragged around like piles of wood and stuff. And I was like, that would be kind of cool if instead of cards, it was just like items. And then another thought I had was like, maybe the smelter is just like a big drawing of a smelter, right? With like a big empty space in the bottom where you put the items in. And instead of having cards stack on top of it, you just like drag in or like little or like images that just just like little or icons and you just like drag them in there and they just smelt. And maybe like you have a little animated blacksmith that just like, you know, like just animates around or hops around or whatever and you can drag him around and he's like you drag him and he like wiggles or whatever. I don't know. So like there's more there's more options too that aren't cards. I just wonder if if we build the same thing without the cards, do we lose that whole like audience that is looking for this type of genre again? I don't know. Decoration cards. Yeah, and we could do that. I just I, I feel like if you're trying to like visually make your shop look nice and you want to like see it decorated, it might make more sense if you don't actually like have 
like it's not cards, right? I don't. <clears throat> I don't know. All ideas. I think I want to stick with the cards. I like cards because they come with the built-in names and details, descriptions, mechanics, explanations. Yes. I also like the cards just because that's like the precedent that these mechan these games have set, right? And I I so my one of my like very favorite art styles ever is um is um oh shoot what was it called frost 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 what was it called I literally own the game hold on wild frost this is like one of my very favorite art styles ever it reminds me of Kitsune's art a lot which I'm absolutely love. Um, I freaking love this game. It's so good. I played the hell out of this game. Um, but I love this art. And when you when these cards move around, like you don't do a lot of like card dragging in this game. It's a, it's a card battler like rogue, uh, deck builder game. Um, but when you like drag the cards around and stuff, like they have like multiple layers on them and they like shift around and stuff. And it just like there's a lot of parallax going on. It just feels so good. Everything is so clean and like polished and everything just feels great. Um, I want to, I want to show you for like doing research. I'm going to open this, but it's probably going to be loud. Uh, play anyway. I hope I didn't lose all my, all my progress. Not that I'm like really far in this game, but I'm far enough that I'd be mad if I had to start over. Cause there's like three factions you have that you like unlock and I've already unlocked all of them. Not Frost. <laughs> no, not quite. The music is also really good in this game. I don't know if you can hear it. I don't think you can. Uh, let's just go to a battle so you can just see. Wait, no. Let's go. Let's pick these guys. <clears throat> so first of all, you start, you pick a leader to start. You can see like all the different layers going on here. Like you have like the character reanimated, which is behind the health, obviously, and the attack. You have like there's just like so many different layers and like the cards and like so much like polish here that the whole screen like shifts left and right as you move your mouse across it. It should there's so much polish. What is the development cost of a game like this? I don't know. Um, all like there's way too much art in this for me to do myself, right? Though they do reuse a lot of this. Like you can see like the, that the character here is the exact same as this character here. Actually, all three of them. They're all the all three of them the exact same with different hairstyles, different masks, different colors. Like, but they're all the exact same. They're just holding different weapons. So like there's just a lot of different layers and they clearly just have like a bunch of templates and they just slap them together and like Photoshop or whatever. So that's cool. Um, but like, look at that. Like, just look at the freaking look at the polish there. It's so it's just so juicy. You know what I mean? Like everything just looks 3D. It's a 2D game, but like look how like look how much like 3D like polish there is just on that. And then this is a silly like system, but you can rename this. There's Matt. Let's go. And you can pick like a a a partner. There's Matt. So like, and this is like such a simple. These are really oh, that's actually a new that thing that popped up there. Um. Anyway, th this is a pretty simple like this. I don't. I don't want to build this game, obviously. Um. But I just love like the polish that goes into this, and I love like the cards and stuff and the art style. So I want to kind of like match this art style, but like with less stuff going on, like a little simplified. Um. But I just love the art style. I've kind of like tried to sort of do that a little bit. Um, I've gone maybe I've gone a little bit in a different direction because I'm just I'm just learning. I'm not a good artist yet, but like yeah, I don't know. There's a lot. But yeah, there's just so much polish. It's crazy to me. It's just crazy how much polish there is. Like let's just push the button and show you what Looks like, oh, that's not the right button. Oh, yeah, it is. I haven't played this in a while. There's like blood that spatters on the screen, which is kind of weird. I think I have it turned on to like, um, colored. Um, so it's like 
random colors, whatever. Anyway, um, that's we're we're not continuing that. Um, but I love the art style, so I want to like kind of match that. But I want to like I want to stick with the art the cards for now because that's kind of the precedent we set, and then like. I don't know. I'm I'm ex I'm excited to kind of experiment and see what we can get away with as far as these mechanics go, because like really all I want to do right now is just make it so I can stack cards together and then they can check to see what's in the stack and then perform certain actions based on that. And we're close to that. <coughs> what is the engines game? I assume that one's built. I, I assume both those games are built in Unity, but I don't know. I know the Unreal Engine is not the ideal engine of choice for a game like this. I 100% know that. However, it is definitely my engine of choice and I can code in Unreal Engine much easier than any other engine. So, yeah, I actually reached out to um, Lewis, uh, who used to work on Swords of Magic. You guys don't remember uh, to see if he wanted to help me work on this and he just wasn't quite interested in it. Didn't really have the time. So I'm um, going solo again because I was like just struggling to like code it. And I was like, this is definitely something that Lewis would be like, he would. I feel like he'd be on board with this and he would know how to like do this stuff and we could work together on it. But at me, <clears throat> oh, it is Unity. I know the asset that can do all the UI animation effects in Unity. Yeah, I'm not too worried about that. He switched to Unreal as well, I think. Uni uh, oh, Lewis. Oh, yeah. No, I wanted to work in Unreal anyway even with Lewis, he knows Unreal because of me, because of Swords of Magic. Um, and I think he's working in Unreal more than Unity now, too. But he has a full time job and he makes um, he's, he's doing that. So like he doesn't have time to go work on a side project for fun. Um, not that it, this would be for fun. This would be for money. But I think that's also not really a motivation for him. Um, so which is fine. Totally understandable. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. So what is the what is the plan here? Um, first of all, I think. I think I broke. Casting shadows, I don't know what I did. I did something and lost shadows. It might be on the card itself. material i just have a, a test material slapped on here uh i would build like a more complicated um like ui material that i could swap assets out and stuff and like yeah it would be i actually did it already in a previous game where i played with cards a little bit and i built a pretty comprehensive like thing where i could swap out the backing of the card um the name of the card the description on the card uh, the icon, like all that stuff. So I already know that I can build all these things in UI elements um, or not. I guess I could just make them in planes and I just stack them on top of each other in 3D and then I can just like do that. The problem with that in this game, and I love to do like those 3D elements, but the problem with this is because they stack. Um, because they stack on top of each other and they have to stack pretty close, right? Like I can't do this because then when you drag another card to stack on top, you're going to be dragging underneath the stack. And if you stack like 15 cards, which you should be able to do, your stack's going to get like, it's going to stair step up to, you know, up to the heavens. And so they have to stack pretty close together. Like I'm talking like almost Z fighting close. So you get like this effect. <clears throat> so you can really only see the names of each card because that's all you need to see anyway at this point. Um, but then if we do like the layered like UI effect, you're going to have that like popping through. And so we'd have to do a thing where like when you stack a card, it snaps all the UI down like on top of each other onto like its own layers and you snap right above that layer. Um, and then when you pull the cards back off, all those pop, those those layers can pop back out, which I think would be cool and it would work. But that's all polished stuff. and I'm not worried about that right now. Wouldn't this be easier in UMG? Um, to just use Z index to keep them layered and put further uh, downwards. Um, the problem with UMG is that I don't know and I don't want to deal with like dragging things around because then like you have this, it adds a lot of complexity in my opinion because one I want to be able to like drag around the world right and like find things like I feel like it'd be cool if you had like a lot of stuff to like like you can drag up here and move your cards up here I don't know and obviously you'll need to be able to zoom out or whatever I don't know maybe maybe like looking around too much is not actually a good idea because like I don't think anyone wants to like drag their cards and like 
move like that. I don't know. That's probably not what we want to do. Oh, did I just break that? He's gone. I was just curious what would happen. I assumed it would just do nothing, but I guess not. <coughs> UMG might also end up being way more costly on the, the CPU than this, for what's worth. Yeah, I, that could that could also be true. I figured you might have like 100 cards on the screen at a time, and I know that's not going to be a problem, just because I've seen what, what we're doing in Swords and Magic. Um, yeah, the one the one issue I'm running into right now, and I'm probably going to have to fake this instead, is I and maybe maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe at the same time, it's like it'll be just as as cost effective. Lux, what are you doing? Come here. You just licking your paw. You just doing weird stuff under the desk. Um. Anyway, uh, so what I'm worried about is that each one of these cards has a spring arm attached to it, which we learned the hard way in Swords of Magic is expensive. Oh, I just realized I moved the actual like card here not the I move the card like static mesh not the actual like full card anyway that was probably acting weird whatever um so I do have um oh I think I took it off temporarily but I I did have a um spring arm attached to each one of these so when you move the to the bottom card all the other cards like shift with it you know and like it like has the camera lag um, cause that's like a quick and easy way to add that, add that lag. And it felt really good and looked really good. The problem with it is that when you pick up a card, the camera lag happens in the Z axis too. So when you pick up the, like you have two cards stacked like this, you pick up the bottom card, it goes up like this. The bottom one has like the camera lag and then goes up and then catches back up. So you have the cards clipping on it in, into each other and that's really ugly. So I have to like figure out a way to disable the Z axis on the, the spring arm, or I just need to fake it. Um, with some like eventic math, which I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that or not. Uh, it sounds complicated and I'm kind of trying to avoid that. So I think I might go in and try to like make a new camera manager or something and see if I can like, like brute force the spring arm to just stay in the same Z axis. Lost to the void. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> anyway, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I, I don't, I did think about UMG because then I could worry about Z layering and stuff and I wouldn't have to worry about this stuff, but I don't like it. Um, I just, I think it'd be more complicated than just having like physical, like card dragging around. Um, I think it's going to cause more problems than it's worth. So I'm a bit opposed to that right now. <laughs> anyway, what I was working on before I went live or before I was going to go live <clears throat> is not coughing every three seconds. And I'm also working on this recursive stack update function uh, because at first what I was doing is I was basically just every every card starts at begin play. There's a lot of code on these cards already uh, with this parent card thing where it's setting itself to its own parent card, which should be should have, which was originally called owner card, but I just switched the name of it recently. Um, so it basically set itself to its own owner because they're all individual cards at the start. Uh, there's no stacked cards in the beginning of the game. So there's like they're all going to be their own owner or their own parent. And then what I'm doing is oh, we have an ad break. Of course we do. Hey, Safiro, Safirio, sorry. Welcome in. Thank you so much for the for the prime sub. Appreciate that. Um, and thank you for um, I don't know what I was going to say. Uh, congratulations on subbing just in time to miss the ad. Hopefully you actually missed it. I feel like I've subbed before and then still, still had to sit through like a three minute ad and that sucked. Anyway, so yeah, so these parent, this like parent card of itself. Uh, basically what, what I'm doing is when you stack a new card on to an existing onto another card, it's going to basically run this recursive update stack function on itself and say, hey, are you your own parent or are you not your own parent? If you aren't your own parent, then I know that I'm the I'm I have a, I have a card above me in the stack. And oh, yeah, and I need to like set each parent whenever it gets stacked before this, which I will get to. In fact, maybe I'll do that first. Maybe I need to put the new. 
No, I don't want to do that here. No, I want to do it outside. Anyway, uh, so yeah, we're, we're basically just going to check to see if we have a, a card above this. And if we do, we take the existing stack that we're putting through here, which is basically just every card it themselves at the begin at the beginning. And we push that to the parent card and we then we update the stack with this new card. So we're just like grabbing the like, uh, break. We get cards, we do add. Yeah, add unique because we should never have multiples that's in card. Hello. Hello. Uh, and then. Let's see, we're adding the self to the stack that of the parent card. I might not be able to do this while I'm on stream. I, I have a hard time doing things that require a lot of focus on stream. Because I'm like, you think I'd, it'd be easier because I'm narrating, but sometimes that's not always the case. Uh, we add that. I'm worried about this. I guess it's fine. And then we set the members in the struct, and then we have that struct on the parent, and then the parent. Puts that struck back in. Yeah, so basically the plan is this will basically say, hey, I have a parent. Here's this new card that's in the stack. And then that parent says, hey, do I have a parent? Yes, I do. Here's here's my stack with this new card in it. It goes up there and it'll just keep going until it hits the top of the stack. And then it finally goes, oh, wait, I'm my own parent. So I'm at the top of the stack. And then from there, what it's going to do is going to loop through that whole new updated stack. And link all the cards together. It'll like unparent all the cards, like it's going to like unlink all of them and then link them again. So they're nice. It's like a clean link. And then once that linking everything is done and they're all like set up, so they're supposed to be set up. And they're all like. Yeah, I think that's a lot to do is just link them, which is um, attaching them really. Uh, and then I'm going to send that whole stack to a stack manager. Cloud error, Wild Frost. Thank you. Thanks for letting me know. Um. Send that to a, I want to have a stack manager that handles all of the like checking recipes and all of the like progress updates and stuff because some cards or some stations that are not like they'll be cards, but they can't be dragged uh, will be like just sitting there. And when a card, when a stack of cards goes into them or um, when it, when cards pile up and become a stack, every time a new card adds that it's going to go check a recipe data table and say, hey, I have all these cards. Do any of these match up? Do I have all these these cards in any of these recipes? And if they match up one to one and I have this thing and I have this thing and all these other conditions are met, then I'm going to start this timer and I'm going to start a progress bar timer. And then when that like that'll be ticking and then anytime we update that thing again, it'll go through and do the same thing, like update all those and any of those things that have like progress bars, if they can no longer tick, they'll cancel the progress bar and kill it. And then the, that'll be done. Uh, but if the progress bar gets to the end, then it'll go through and say, oh, yeah, this is the item that we're trying to craft or whatever. I'm also thinking that we might need like a stop button or something or maybe. I'm worried about. Players adding more cards on and then it deleting that card if it's not necessarily in the, in the recipe, but maybe I don't know if I don't know if recipes need to be exact. I guess they should be exact. I think the only time they shouldn't, they don't need to be exact, is like the smelter. But we can make smelter recipes like kind of an exception. Like a process is into kind of like thing. I don't know. We'll we'll come to that step when we get to it. Indiana Jones to that ad. Nice. Yeah, I'm here. No ad. Nice job. So yeah, that's the plan here. Okay, let's walk. We gotta walk through this again. Uh, three hours of sleep. Probably not enough sleep to like do this in a like good way. Uh, so down here I have add to stack. This is all very broken, so I don't want to do this anymore. Um, we do have an attached card. 
think I can get rid of this now. I don't think we need to know about our our bottom, like uh, the cards underneath us anymore. Because I think this stack data will have all of your child cards in it. So every card will only know about the cards that are underneath of it because the next card gets sent like it'll send the stack data up to the next card and that card will update it with its self with itself and then it'll know okay yes I'm now the new stack and then when it gets to the top I'm probably going to flip the, the the array so then the bottom card is the base that way I can know zero is always going to be I guess I can do last index too but knowing knowing like zero is like the base and like it stacks down would be probably easier. So yeah, so I'll probably flip that just for, I guess it doesn't matter. Um, so that means that anytime you drag a new card off the stack, obviously when a drag, when a card is dragged, we need to update both stacks. So I guess we do need to know about a parent, or I guess we can just bind to all the children. No, because we bind to all children, then every single one of the cards is going to run that rec recursive update. Hmm. I guess we might need to store the attached card the like directly under it. Let's do it for now, I guess, and if we don't need it, we'll, we'll change it later. All right, so first off, we're stacking a card. <coughs> the The new card, the dragged card or dropped card, is calling this function on the, the card it just dragged onto. So we're telling it, hey, this is the new card that's being stacked. So then we're telling it, hey, you have a new attached card. Uh, this is all debug information so we can see what's being done here. I don't know if we need this anymore, but I'm going to just leave it here in case. And then this is where I'm binding that child. Maybe we do actually leave this here because this we can bind to that child to say, hey, have you if you've been dragged, we need to update We need to do the recursive update again. Um, but I don't want to do a detach here. And I don't want to do parent card updates and stuff like that here. We should do this probably. When the child actor is here, we do need to reset this. But then we need to call the recursive update on all these. Every time a card is dragged, we also should probably No, I think we're okay. Every time a card is dragged, we should reset its parent to itself. And that should be like all we really need to do. And I don't want to do this here. We should do this in the actual drag function. I think I'm already doing. Hover and drag on drag. I'm not doing it here. Let's do it right here. So set parent card to self. We're going to break everything before any of this works again, but that's all right. And then whenever a new card is attached, we need to call our new recursive update stack function. And we need to update or drag in the existing stack, which should be nothing. Also, keeping in mind, this is the card it was just stacked onto. So I feel like we should get the stack data. Because the stack data right now is only going to have this card in it. Which means it's not going to know about the next card down. So we need to get the new card, or I guess we get attached card. And do get stack data. What? Why did I do that? 
I made that an actor. I guess because I should probably be using um, interfaces for all these things. I've been using them pretty diligently so far, but <clears throat> I don't mind casting here because it's itself. It's already loaded. So we run this on itself, which brings in the stack data from the card that just attached to it. And then it runs that on itself and then checks for a parent, checks for a parent, checks for a parent, and keeps doing that and keeps adding the card to the stack data each time. Let's double check that's actually working. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> oh, I'm not even adding the existing stack. I'm setting the parent card to this stack data. Oh yeah, I guess I don't need to send this existing stack through, do I? I don't. Because when it runs the recursive function, it grabs the parent No, we should be grabbing the. This is why it's so confusing. There's just like so many layers to this. I have to like, I have to, you guys ever heard that like the, this is, uh, this man's father is my father's son riddle. It's like that. That's, that's how I feel programming this system. Okay. So this gets called on the parent of the newly attached actor first. We check to see if we are our own parent, which means we'd be the base of the stack. Which means we won't know about the child. No, we will know about its direct child. But we won't know about this yet. Hmm. This is tricky. I think I'm, I might not have enough sleep to be able to figure this out right now. I'm trying my, I'm trying really hard not to overcomplicate it. Um, I think at begin play, we need to update the stack data of this card as well. This is not what I want. So now every card has itself as its own stack data. When we update the parent card, we need the new attached card.
Yeah, and we want to get it stack data. Let's just push this through. So yeah, I do want to do this. So we get the attached card, we get the stack data, we push this in here, and then we can use that to set that. Um, guys, give me 30 seconds. I'm right in the middle of doing something I know, but I have to make sure that Abby, I, can, I don't have to be Abby from school. We're back.
Okay, I lied. It wasn't 30 seconds. I'm sorry. But I'm back with a little guy. Say hi, little guy. Can you say hi to the stream? Whoa. He wants to sit there. Um, so I'm I'm on dad duty now because it's really windy outside and so Jan didn't want to take him to the over the school. We walk to the school to get Abby every day. So he's hanging with me for a minute. He looks like a big guy now. Yeah, he's getting pretty big. He's so sweet, though. You yawning? He just took a 40 minute nap. Don't your socks off? He hates socks. Ad break. Damn it. I'm sorry. I just need a button that just like, okay, I'm taking, I'm going to, I'm going to walk away. I break right now. Yeah. I only like socks for wearing shoes. If I'm not wearing shoes, my socks come off. Anyway, I think we're on the right track here. So now I've forgotten where we were, so I have to start over. Uh, it's okay. Um, I am. What? What'd you say? What'd you say to me? Yeah. Me too, dude. I'm probably a little too sleep deprived to like build this system right now, but I do want to try to get it. I'm going to try to get it working. Yeah, I should be back in like five, ten minutes. So we'll hang out here with Quinn as long as he'll let me. I might have to take another break. What? 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 Yeah, I know. Yeah. Can you just lick your fingers. Yeah. Uh, welcome back, everybody. How was your little one? Uh, he is 13 months old. Almost 14 months old. He'll be 14 months old on the first. So he's getting older. He just learned to walk. Like last week, he just like figured it out. And now he's just hobbling around the house. Ugh. He's very good at it. His name is Quinn. He has crazy long hair. Jana won't, Jana won't let me cut it yet. Not me, but she won't let me take him to get a cut. That's when you need to hide everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, we haven't, we hadn't baby proof like the kitchen and stuff yet. Cause he, he kind of was like, stuck in our living room area uh -huh. um and even when he was crawling like we just had like a, we just kind of barricaded it so he couldn't get out so we would just hang out in there most of it, most of the time uh, uh but now that he's walking he wants a little more space and so we've been letting it out a little more um to run around the house and and he just discovered how to open our cabinets so we don't have like cabinet handles door handles it's just like the wood ones you just kind of pull open um so he it took him a while to figure that out but he just figured it out and it's uh yeah, luckily, like we do not let him out of our sight, so it's not that big of a deal right now. But we're probably gonna go get the the child proofing stuff for those, which we should have already done. But is what it is. Once walking, everything changes real quickly. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, we have a nine year old, so it's been a long time since we've done this. And with her, she was so easy. So we had a uh, in our our house in Arizona. We we live in Washington now, but we lived in Arizona about five years ago. Six years ago now. Um, we had like this upstairs like loft area. So like go upstairs and there's just like this little area that's just like a loft where we have like TV couches and everything and all of her toys. And it has like this little like step up with like a half wall that goes around it. And so we just put a like a gate right there on that little step up in the half wall. And she had free reign of that whole room. And we like, you know, we baby proofed the whole thing. We strapped all the furniture to the wall. Um, we, we put like the... 
um, we like locked the cabinet door so she couldn't get into like the entertainment center and stuff. And then the rest of the room was like all hers, like, all toys, all for her. And our house here is so much more complicated. It just does like there's no good spot for him to have like for his own place. So he's got his own room that he can play in all he wants. Um, but you know, there's nothing in his room to do other than him play. So like we get sick of like sitting in there with him for a while. Uh, so we don't really have a good spot like we did with Abby. Anyway. Yeah, the goal is to get this prototyped out this week. And then as soon as I start feeling the itch to work on Swords of Magic again, I'm probably just going to do that and I'll work on this on the side if I'm feeling like it still. Um, like I said, obviously, I would like to really get another game out there and like start, you know, like you guys paid a hundred dollars. We did we did a hundred dollars in donations for a Steam page. And I know that was supposed to be for Dwarven Hold, but I had confirmation that most people who donated said it was okay if it was to another game. <laughs> so it's probably going to be for a different game. Um, I'd like to be this game because I'm enjoying working on this. It's a totally different like game, totally different thing. Uh, so it's kind of it's kind of fun and fresh, but who knows? Next week, I might be completely bored of it and might not want to do it anymore. So. We'll see what happens. Oh, you can't push that. You can't push that button. What do you want to play with? I know you're bored. This might not last very long. We might end the stream. And I might go take a nap. And then I might stream again tomorrow if I'm working on this. If I have a little more rest and I'm ready to like tackle the bigger problems. Because I... I really like doing early dev like this on stream so I can get feedback like like right away and it's just more fun when it's like a new fresh project so we'll see. Are you so cute? Well, there goes that. But yeah, I'm kind of excited to draw like armor and a bunch of weapons and stuff. I just did like all the basic things I could think of that I could like start with. Um, that's not what I wanted. This one. I figured like a horseshoe is a pretty good and like nails are a pretty good like early thing. I figured rubies you could just sell and then maybe later they could be used in recipes. Coal for fuel, stone is just like a basic throwaway recipe or thing for now. I don't know, maybe it can, maybe it can have a use somewhere. And then copper ore. Uh, oh, I guess I need to make a copper ingot. I'll probably I'll probably end up doing a painting stream. You guys can watch me struggle in Photoshop. It's just such a it's such a different vibe for me, and it's like totally different than what I'm used to. So it's it's just different. But I'm having a lot of fun designing like the the weapons and stuff. I'm like kind of creating my own style. So. Ugh. Oh, your daughter's 20 months. I don't know how I missed that. That's fun. It's a fun age. Jan and I were just talking yesterday about how how different everything, like how fast everything changed as soon as like she could talk. Um, Abby could talk. And it was just like. The second she started talking, like everything just like switched. It was just like she ha finally had her own like little personality and everything and could express herself. And that's really fun. What? He does not want me to hold her hands anymore. <laughs> You're being so good. You're being so patient. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> You're crazy. We just want to press buttons. All right. Um, I think we might call it. I think we're in, let's go find somebody to raid. Because he's probably not going to want to sit here much longer. I don't know how long, how much longer Jan is going to be. I don't know how much longer I can. My brain is going to work. 
So maybe we'll go raid Vimlar? Why not? We're gonna go raid Vimlar. Instead of just having baby streams. Good luck it is. All right, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out today. Thanks for the follows. I got a couple subs. That's really nice of you. Um, I will be back on Thursday again. Oh, you know what? I think I have a dentist appointment on Thursday. But I will definitely either stream Thursday after my dentist appointment or before maybe. I don't know what time it is. Um, or maybe Friday when I, my mouth isn't numb anymore. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, it'll. I'll definitely be streaming again later this week. Maybe it'll be tomorrow. Who knows? Uh, but... Let's get out of here. Is that the right button? Found it. Um, and I will catch you guys Ooh. next time. Thanks again for hanging out. Appreciate it. Uh, feel free to post in the Discord if you have questions or ideas for this card game. Love to hear them uh, before I get too deep into the base mechanics. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Hey, bye.